reinforces why I just will never eat mushrooms. Like, they were creepy in here. Mushrooms, aesthetically pleasing, not good for eating. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and this week's theme is gothic. Last week I had a murder mystery reading week and I loved it. I had so much fun. It was exactly what I needed to get me out of the weird kind of reading slump-ish feeling that I was in. It was perfect. I had such a good time and I really enjoyed having just a set theme for the week and then reading whatever I felt like out of all of that. It was great. It was exactly what I needed and so I've decided that we're going to continue that and this week we're doing gothic books because there is a book that I need to read for the month which is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is the Discord book club pick for October. If you ever want to take part in the book club, Discord is always linked below. You can just join in whenever you want. It's a good time. I enjoy the book clubs. It's really fun to see what options come up and Mexican Gothic won, which was really good actually because Mexican Gothic is a book I picked up recently because of Abby. I met up with Abby as part of this big booktuber meetup and she was talking about Mexican Gothic and convinced me to get a copy. So I'm really excited to get to this one. This is kind of reminiscent of things like Jane Eyre and Rebecca, except this one is set in Mexico and we're following Nomi and she gets a troubling message from her cousin who has just married into the Doyle family and is living on their estate and things are weird. So Nomi goes to see what's going on and try and help her cousin and everything spirals from there. I think it's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to the really like gothic atmosphere and the weird happenings that you don't really know is this supernatural or not. Trying to work it all out. I think it's going to be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to starting the week off with this one. I will be taking it to work and reading it on my lunch break because I have work for the next two days and then I'm off for three days. So this is definitely going to get finished at the start of this week I'm hoping. That's the plan. I do want to read another book this week. I haven't decided what that book is. I've left my October TBR open so there's only a handful of books that I had to read for the week, for the month, not the week. And so what I've kind of decided to do is each week read one of those and then make it a theme around the themes that were in that book that I have to read. Does that make sense? So the theme is gothic and I, yeah, I haven't decided what I'm going to go for that. I could go down the classic book route. I could, I've got a YA new release one. So I could read that or I've also got some more adult ones. So I haven't quite decided what I'm going to read yet. And I'm leaving it open, just seeing where my mood is in a few days time, what I feel like picking up. We're going to see what happens there. But that's everything actually for this intro, which is rather short for once, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna save myself from like rambling and making this intro twice the length for no reason. We're gonna leave it there for the intro which is great. I hope you're all doing really well. Let me know what you've been up to and what you're reading. I know a couple of you have already started Mexican Gothic or already read it so do let me know how you're getting on with it, if you've already read it, etc. I have really high expectations. Even the people in the Discord have already read it or are currently reading it. All the updates of it sound amazing. So I'm really excited to get stuck into this one. I don't know, I just feel like it could be a potential new, maybe not new favorite of all time, but definitely a new favorite Gothic atmosphere book. And I do love a good Gothic atmosphere book. So I'm, I don't know, I have high hopes for this one. I think it's going to be really good. And yeah, that is going to be it for this week. I am busy on those three days off. I am actually busy every single day. We've got lots going on, so I'll be taking you with me. And I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be amazing. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to double the length of this intro by rambling, and that's exactly what I have done. Let's go and start Mexican Gothic and start off this Gothic reading week. Good morning. It is now Wednesday, and we have a few days off work, and I'm so excited for it. But first let's talk about Mexican Gothic because I've read a little bit. I'm now up to chapter 8, page 82, and I do like this. I am reading it a little bit slower. I do find that when I've had a week of reading loads of books, which was last week I read three books, consistently reading a lot every single day, I then like to take a couple days where I'm still reading but I'm just reading a little bit less and that's what happened with Mexican Gothic although it is really good and I would like to make a good bit of progress today but we'll see what happens. So far we've had 
Nomi. She's our main character and she has had a letter from her cousin. It was actually addressed to her father. Her father then goes to Naomi. I need you to go to Catalina, your cousin. I'm very concerned and worried and I just feel like she's not being taken care of how she should. Like if she needs more help like from doctors and stuff then we need to determine that and actually do it. We need to make sure that her husband actually has her best interests at heart and so Nomi goes. Nomi is a really like free-spirited person. She has changed her mind several times about the things that she wants to do. She loves going between different men, never really settling down or anything and just having fun with parties and stuff like she is carefree and independent and an amazing character to follow but this is very very different to how the Doyles want a woman to act and they, when Naomi arrives, they set down these rules and Naomi's like, yeah, well, of course I'm not gonna pay attention to those. Like, I don't follow my father's rules. What makes you think I'm gonna follow yours? But they're really weird rules, like no talking when you're at dinner. So they all sit down together and eat, but they don't talk to one another. Like, she's not allowed to leave the house without being asked and she has to be driven there by somebody else. And she's like, but I have a driver's license. I can drive myself. And it's just really weird. The house is in really bad disrepair as well. There's mold. It's just really Really unusual like there's no electricity even though this is at a time where electricity is still kind of new but it's still you know places have it and then this place like barely has any electricity like everything's done with like candles and stuff it's just she finds it really weird and it's really run down I think the atmosphere is really good like the choicing of the words that are being used is fantastic I really am enjoying that we have the house that's always shrouded in mist and there are lots of descriptions of things like rotting and it's really good I'm really enjoying that we also get dreams in this Nomi starting to get some really strange dreams that are going on and I always really love that I, I don't know I've mentioned it before but dreams in books I find really fascinating especially because the author's able to use them to convey certain messages and I really find it interesting and these ones are really eerie and unusual so far I'm really enjoying this I think the just the setting the language everything is really good however the Doyle family themselves are extremely off-putting especially the patriarch of the family I think his name's Howard he is horrible he starts talking to Nomi about eugenics and about the way somebody looks an inferior and superior race and how beauty and the way women's only purpose in life is to have children and the aesthetics of a person are really important and it's really unsettling. Every time he speaks I just get the chills because it is so unsettling and thankfully Nomi's very like stubborn puts him in a place like nope we're not discussing this and I don't agree with this but she's smart so she does it in a really intelligent way and I really like that. Oh my god does he give me the creeps like it is so ugh, just ew gross everything about him is gross that's it's a bit unsettling. But I'm really enjoying this book. I would like to read more of it today. We'll see how much we get read. I'm actually also really enjoying taking it slower. I would love to say that I'm only reading one book. I'm not. I'm still reading War and Peace, although I haven't actually read that in days, and so I'm actually really behind on that. So we'll, we'll see. We'll catch up eventually, hopefully, maybe. Who knows? But I would love to finish this over the next few days and maybe over the weekend to pick up something different. We'll see how we get on. Like I say, I do need to read a little bit of War and Peace. I don't think that's gonna happen today because today I want to get filming a couple of things. The house is nice and quiet, so I wanna get that done. But then I'm meeting my partner and we're going to a Monet exhibit. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be really good. It's one of those immersive exhibits. So we're gonna go out and do that and have dinner. And then tomorrow I'm busy as well because I'm meeting with a friend from work and we're going to see Macbeth at the Shakespeare Globe. So that's gonna be really fun in the evening so I'm hoping tomorrow during the day I can get lots of like editing bits done and try and read a bit of a war and peace and catch up on things and then see that in the afternoon and then Friday I mean I'm probably going to be doing an update between all of this stuff but then Friday I'm spending a bit of time with my mom I do have a blood test so I'm going to see if she's happy for us to go and do that first and then we're going to go and have lunch together and they've got some charity shops so that's the plans for the next few days it's busy and then I go back to work on my early shifts which that may actually be a break from the busy days but it's going to be a good few busy days I've got lots of things planned in between all of that I would really like to get Mexican Gothic finished and potentially start another book I don't know I, I know I said you wanted another gothic book but do we go for short story gothic 
or an actual book. I think that depends on when I finish Mexican Gothic. We're gonna see, I still haven't actually decided that. I'm in two minds, what do I want to do? Right, I need to stop rambling. Let's get on with these other videos and I will probably catch up with you at some point. Maybe tomorrow if I get a good chunk of this read or at some point. At some point we're gonna be catching up and I will definitely try and take any like video b-roll stuff of the Monet exhibit if I can. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be absolutely stunning. looks like evening time I'm not gonna lie it is a perfectly overcast rainy day which is amazing however today is also the day that I'm going to see Macbeth which is an outdoor cinema cinema no outdoor theater so we're gonna see how that goes I honestly I'm really looking forward to it and I think our seating is actually in the covered part so we should be absolutely fine really looking forward to it tonight it's going to be so good before that point though I've got lots of editing and things that I want to get done today but I did just want to mention the Monet exhibit that we saw yesterday it was okay I actually think it started off beautifully I really liked the start the way they brought the painting to life with the bridge and everything like that was gorgeous and then the second room I really liked as well, where it was more like this office space, well, study space, and you had his paintings up on the wall. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So the first two rooms, amazing. I really loved it. And then we went into the next room, which was the more interactive digital part of the experience. And I just don't think it worked very well. I think the music they chose for it didn't really go with the paintings. That's something me and my partner were discussing while we were in there is that, you know, they're showing all these different paintings, which is really good. However, even the room itself wasn't the best for it. You had this pillar in the middle of the room, which would have been good if you had like the image that was being shown on all the other walls done as like a smaller image on that, except it wasn't. It was all super enlarged and Monet's work just doesn't really work super enlarged. It's impressionist, so there's no particular like details to hone in on. So it was really weird seeing all these splotches of paint that just didn't work being superimposed the way they did it. So I think that middle bit meant that you couldn't see the whole bit around the edges. It just, it just didn't quite work unfortunately. The first two rooms I really loved and I think if they had just done the boiler house like that, if they had done it where each room was an interactive experience like that, I think it would have been amazing. And they actually like did the like that main room dedicated to maybe like each corner bringing a part of the painting to life or something like that just done it slightly different I think it would have been really good but as it was me and my partner were like it started really high and then that bit the main event just didn't really work for it which was a bit of a shame but then we went over to a food market for dinner so that was really nice and we had the crumble inside an actual pumpkin so that was really cool and then went our separate ways it was really nice though, I really really enjoyed the day. I did also get quite a decent chunk read. And this book is just getting really creepy. So we're now up to chapter 19, page 199. It is getting really eerie, really unusual. Lots of weird things are happening. Dreams are kind of bleeding in with life. So we don't really know when we're swapping from Nomi being awake to her dreaming it's a really unusual creepy experience and the interactions with the family are just getting weirder and weirder. I do have one family member that I prefer over all the others but even he is still a little bit weird. He's just a little bit more endearing than the others 
um, and we do have Naomi in this really difficult situation and just not knowing what to do like what's the right move where to go everything just seems really weird and closed off and it's kind of claustrophobic in a way and it's just the depictions and that are brilliant so I would like to carry on reading more of this but as I said I do have an editing day to get done so I want to get at least one full video edited and uploaded today hopefully honestly try and get another one done so I don't have to do it on my early shift so I can just focus on doing this vlog um we'll see what we get up to and I would love to be able to finish this today this would also be great if I could do that so we'll see what we get up to and how much we actually get read but yeah I just really wanted to talk about the exhibit because it just it was good I mean I think from the b-roll it looks amazing it's just I didn't bother taking any in the room that just didn't really work because it just didn't really work. But overall, the afternoon was absolutely lovely and I did get the bits filmed that I needed to get filmed, so that's great as well. But right, let's get on with this editing and I also need to do some food shopping and I'm just debating whether to do that today or tomorrow. We'll decide that tomorrow or I think I've just decided that we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> we'll do that tomorrow and just get that all done. Right, anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get on with this day and then go off to see Macbeth, which I'm very excited about because Macbeth is definitely my favorite play by Shakespeare and I think it's perfect for this time of year. afternoon I am feeling surprisingly awake considering I have just finished an early shift but I don't know I just feel really energized I do prefer my early shifts I always feel so good I much prefer waking up early and I'm pretty sure I mention this every single time I start an early shift or like finish my first one don't know what that says about me anyway well it says I repeat myself a lot moving on I have reading updates so I did finish Mexican Gothic and this was just really weird and disturbing but it was really good at the same time like I would say if you liked The House of Good Bones by T. Kingfisher but make it with more of a gothic-y atmosphere so like Jane Eyre and A House of Good Bones combined with the horror side of things I think it works but make it mushrooms so maybe What Moves the Dead would be a better one to pair this with because I haven't read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher yet although I am planning to read that very soon but it just really reminded me of some of T. Kingfisher's like horror aspects of what I was reading in A House with Good Bones but paired with the gothic atmosphere from Rebecca and Jane Eyre and it was so good. There is so much to do with mushrooms in here which is what makes me think maybe What Moves the Dead is a better pairing out of the T. Kingfisher books because I know What Moves the Dead has horror to do with mushrooms but it's good. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was just really eerie, really disturbing. A lot of dark things happen though and I just think disturbing is the word for it. That there's no other word that I can use to explain in this book it's really bizarre and unnatural and just everything that goes on but it works and I really recommend this especially for spooky season and if you do like things like Jane Eyre and Rebecca and you just want something with a bit more horror to it this is a good one for it I think it was done really well I really liked the setting I liked our main character Nomi and how she pushes the boundaries of what society expects from women at this time especially when she goes to the Doyle's household who hold a much more archaic thing of how 
or women especially should just be in their place and they're used for nothing but child rearing and all of this like she pushes out against all of these boundaries and not once does she back down and I love it I love her as a main character I think it was really good so you have this really strong independent female character paired with the gothic atmosphere that I love in my classic books alongside all the horror aspects from like a T. Kingfisher book. It was a perfect blend. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really good and really creepy. Oh yes, then, then we had the theatre production of Macbeth and honestly I was a little bit disappointed with the production. I've read the play Macbeth and I really like it. One of my favourites. I love the witches in it. I didn't love this interpretation of it. The witches, they were in boiler suits which I didn't really like. Like there were men which doesn't bother me. Like that bit didn't bother me it was the fact that they were dressed up in boiler suits like white boiler suit and it was all trying to be modernized but with the Shakespearean language and so like the witch's cauldron was a food processor so that just didn't work for me and then you had some of the characters like there was a kid dressed up in a spider-man costume they tried making it into a comedy and it just for me Macbeth is not a comedy it is a depiction of madness and you've got the witches it's supposed to be spooky and dark and everything and I thought it was going to be so good for this time of year and instead it was kind of turned into a bit of a pantomime-esque and it just didn't work for me unfortunately. I'm still pleased I went to see it I'm still pleased I got to see Macbeth and a version of it it's just not an iteration that I would go and see again I would definitely look for a more classic version of it um, and it wasn't from what I saw it wasn't broadcast as this is a more like comedic modern take on Macbeth and so I wasn't prepared for it so yeah it didn't quite work for me unfortunately but I did have a really nice day yesterday went out to charity shops and that with my mum it was very nice I managed to get a book for one pound which was brilliant because all the charity shops right near the town that I live in. So expensive. Even for a book, even though it's secondhand and normally charity shops you can get books for like 50 pence, a pound, things like that. The ones near me are all so much more expensive. They were cheap there and I was very pleased that this book, Penance by Eliza Clark, was only a pound. I still haven't read Boy Parts by Eliza Clark but I picked this one up anyway because this is a book that I think I'm actually going to prefer to Boy Parts. It's just got a synopsis that really grabs me and I was thinking about picking it up when it was originally released and I thought to myself no because I still have Boy Parts I should read that one first and then I found it in charity shop and how can you say no to one pound for a hardcover that's in perfect condition? You can't. But right so let me just read a little bit of this because I just think it works. Do you know what happened already? Do you know her? Did you see it on the internet? Did you listen to a podcast? Did the host make jokes? Nearly a decade after the horrifying murder of a 16-year-old Joan Wilson in a seaside town, journalist Alec has written the definitive account of the crime, a dizzying feat of investigative, investigative, oh, can't say that word, investigative, mastery. Alec's book is built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members, painstakingly historical research and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves. The result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by the tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The only question is how much of this story is true? It just sounds really good. I have high hopes for this book and to be honest I'm probably going to get to it before Boy Parts even though I've had Boy Parts on my TBR for like a year now. It just sounds good. I'm really looking forward to this. So very pleased I got this for a pound. And then I did some more reading. As we saw I took a couple of books off my shelves yesterday evening and I did start Mary's Monster by Lita Judge. This is a biography on Mary Shelley. It looks at Mary before she became Mary Shelley. It looks at her childhood, the things she went through, the fact that her father remarried and that the stepmother was really quite horrible. It's almost like a fairy tale, the wicked stepmother. She gets sent away and then she falls in love with Percy and you're seeing her and their love blossom, the different things that happened. I'm now up to part seven and it, it this is from May to August in 1816. So each part has the dates that it's from and what part of Mary's life we are up to. We've just met Lord Byron. This is beautiful. I am absolutely loving it. It is gorgeous. The illustrations in this are absolutely amazing. I think it is stunning and I'm really enjoying all the poems in this. Like it is, it's like short little poems but 
it's almost as if it's like a paragraph that I can read normally, it's just put into a poetry layout. I'm sure there is a proper word for that, but poetry is something that I failed in. And generally speaking, I don't really get on with poetry, but this I'm finding just really fascinating learning about Mary, the person that created Frankenstein, the fact that she did the sort at such a young age. It is fascinating and really beautifully written, so I'm really enjoying that. I don't think I'm going to read any more of it tonight though because I'm actually going around to my partner's house so I'm going to leave this here and probably read it tomorrow after work instead but it is fantastic and it's a really quick read because most of it is just illustrations and you just have little bits of text but it's just it's so good. I would highly recommend if you like Mary Shelley's work and you want to learn a bit more about her this is a really accessible way to do that although I wouldn't mind reading more different biographies and stuff around Mary Shelley. She's such an interesting person and that's the sort of non-fiction I like reading is actually around authors that I really like. So yeah, very pleased with this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, would highly, highly recommend. And then I did pick up Dr. Jekyll Mist Hyde by the Robert Louis Stevenson. I've actually already read Dr. Jekyll Mist Hyde. I'm actually trying to finish this collection. I've got two short stories in this collection that I haven't actually read. I tried to start a little bit at work but I wasn't really feeling it. And that's the short story of Markham. And we also have one more in here which is Where of Hermanston. Probably mispronouncing all of those words, except from of, hopefully. But I plan on taking this one to my partners today. So if he decides to game, I can read a bit of this and maybe read a little bit more at work. But instead at work, I was actually feeling like a Kindle book, which I haven't picked up in the last two weeks actually and I decided to pick up The Cavern. I've forgotten the author's name. It's on the title thing and my phone is charging on the other side of my room. But I decided to pick this up. I can't remember where I got up to. I'm only in this, I think I only got up to like chapter four, maybe chapter five. This is a very short book. It's an oceanic, well it's not oceanic, it is a horror book but it's in this cavern. It's an underground cavern. There's been a sinkhole that's opened up this cavern that's been undiscovered before now. And we have inside this cavern, there is a body of water that you can dive down into. It is a horror book and it starts off no holding back. Like I would say the writing style in this book is not my favorite, but it does capture you and it's non-stop action. It's very easy to read because of that. There is some science talk in this, which I like and I appreciate, but there's not loads of it. But at the minute we had these two explorers that went down into this cavern first. They're the ones that first discovered it, but they also discovered a monster at the exact same time. Then we've moved on to, to some different explorers that are gonna go to this cavern because what happened in that was a prologue that basically took like some month beforehand and they're going to this town. But at the same time at this town there's been some like weird deaths and things happening because of this cavern that's been opened up um so we have a monster and everything in there like i say it's it works for this time of year would i reread this at this point in time no because i'm not a fan of the writing style it's not like into the drowning deep where i just loved everything about that book the only thing with this is for me it definitely feels more like horror movie slasher but it's not a human that's doing it it is this monstrous creature that's been trapped inside these depths and is now able to get out. So it's a bit more like slasher stuff than what I would normally go for, but it's fine to read on my break at work as a quick little thing to pick up. Hopefully I can finish it across the next couple of days because I'm planning to wrap this vlog up on Monday. That seems to be my usual Monday to Monday. And we'll see how much I get done. Like I say, it's only a short book. It's only like 180 pages. So hopefully I should get it done across the next like two shifts. But that's what I'm up to. That's what I'm reading. I do feel like getting back into my Kindle books and I have had three eBooks saved for October. One being The Cavern, which was, I don't know what's going on with the focus of my camera it's been really weird hopefully it's all fine <laughs> yeah one was the cavern which was recommended to me by some of you and also from below by Darcy Coates that's more of like a mermaid one so I would like to read that one also in my dreams I hold a knife that's by an author that I've read another book of theirs who did The Last Housewife and I liked that so I'm interested to see I think it's the same author or have I got that mixed up I don't know. Anyway, they're all on, two of them are on Kindle Unlimited and I think the From Below one was like 99 pence. So I decided to get that and been saving them for Halloween. So that's what I plan on reading over the next couple of weeks on Kindle. Why did I give you this Kindle update? I don't know. I haven't read from it in a while. So anyway, I need to stop talking and get on with a few things before I head over to my partners. But like I said, I will be taking this one with me. So hopefully, actually, fingers crossed, when I update you Monday, probably won't do it tomorrow. I will actually have finished Mary's Monster and this and potentially even the cavern, which would be an amazing accomplishment for this week. But anyway, I need to stop rambling and I'm really hoping that my focus on this camera didn't go in and out. Keeps doing it to me lately and I don't know why. 
it is on autofocus. I can't work out manual focus. Anyway, you don't need to know this. I need to stop talking about it and actually like get on with doing stuff. So I will catch up with you soon, in a couple days. I always say that at the end of these clubs clops clips okay uh, maybe i'm more tired than i thought because i am now doing tired rambles and i actually thought i was fine but i did have a little bit of chocolate before doing this update so maybe the sugar's hitting me now we're gonna go the sugar rush not the one and you don't need those rambles so we'll stop to wrap up this vlog and since I last spoke I have finished two books and DNF'd a book and the book I DNF'd was The Cavern. I'd already said how I wasn't getting on with the writing style and it just didn't really change for me. This, as much as I was intrigued because I really liked Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, I absolutely loved it and I was looking for more books like that book and this is one that was recommended and it is similar in the sense we've got some science bits to it but the writing style isn't one that I could connect with. Also it's a lot more like slasher, body horror, gore sort of thing which I don't mind but I haven't had a chance to be connected to any of these characters. I feel like it was more for like jump scares but it didn't work because the atmosphere wasn't there. So it felt like a horror film which I don't particularly like horror films, so it just didn't quite work for me, unfortunately. But I did finish Mary's Monster and I loved this book. I thought it was fantastic. It was really heartfelt and just sad. The things that Mary had to go through in her life is so sad and how she used all of these things as an influence to creating Frankenstein and I loved it. I thought it was so well done. Could even possibly be on my top books of the year because it was just so good and the artwork alongside it was fantastic. It was so good. I loved it. I loved the grayscale. I think it really added to everything. It was just really good. One thing I also really liked is at the very end you've got extra comments about Frankenstein, the text, how that was received. You also have bits like this which is actually a bibliography of the lines that were used in the poems throughout this were actually pulled directly from the journals that Mary kept, letters between her and her parents, her and other people and they were direct lines that were taken and used for this and I feel like that really gives you an added sense of who Mary was. I really enjoyed it, I thought it was really good, highly recommend, so good. I, I, I really would recommend this, I really really enjoyed this book and I just think it's so well written and if you are interested in Mary Shelley and just learning more about her this is a really good intro way to do that. It was great. Loved it. And then the other book I finished is the short stories in this little bind up. It was fine. I only had the two as I'd already mentioned. Markham was probably the more interesting out of the two. This was looking at morality. Does a person's circumstances mean that the crime they commit is lesser because of their circumstances or not? And it was kind of like that question and they were having a conversation about it. So that was interesting. And then the second story was again one on morality but how do we judge people? So it's not about a judge and his son. It's a bit of a slow lead up to it but in essence it's about judging his son. The son starts to question how can we judge others when it says in the bible that thou shall not judge so how can we do that if it's directly going against what god has even said and also the penalty like death penalty is that really necessary is it right or are we just murderers because of it so again bringing up those 
morality questions which I come to expect from Robert Louis Stevenson. And it was fine but it's definitely not his strongest work but I really wanted to finish it just because it was in this and I wanted to be able to go yes that, that's done, that's completely off my shelves. So technically this wasn't on my TBR because when I first read Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde I did tick this off. There was also four other four short stories and now I've completed them all and I would say honestly the first three are the strongest so Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde being the best and then these last two I, I feel like you don't need to read these like they're not like the underrated ones that I'm like oh my god that was amazing you should definitely give this a try I, I think they were fine I could have also just not read them and it wouldn't have mattered but this week has been the gothic reading week so I think we started off really strong with Mexican gothic this was fantastic eerie disturbing a modern take on the gothic classic it is a bit weird and also like fever dream-esque as well i enjoyed it though and then i feel like mary's monster does work for the gothic as well one because we're learning about mary shelley so perfect there and just the vibes and the atmosphere of this book was very gothic was very dark and i think all the illustrations really lend to it reading from an actual gothic genre author. Uh, so Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a gothic story. I wouldn't say that the two short stories I read were technically gothic stories. They definitely had darker elements to them. They were questioning things. There was murder in them. I don't know. So it, it does qualify, but it's not as atmospheric gothic as I would have liked. So yeah, those are the three books that I finished this week. Well, technically not all of this, but that's what I read this week. I've enjoyed doing these themed reading weeks. I think they're just so fun especially because it's all around like October, Halloween time. I love it. Now I know we can read these books any time of the year, but there's something extra special about reading them in October that just works for me. But before I go off on more rambly tangents, I'm going to leave it there because it's just been a busy few days at work. Nothing much else has actually happened. So I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you've made it this far, as always, I'm impressed and thank you so much. But I would put a mushroom emoji in the comments below because yeah, mushrooms are a big part of this book. <laughs> Reinforces why I just will never eat mushrooms. Like they were creepy in here. Mushrooms, aesthetically pleasing, not good for eating as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that is this one. So a mushroom emoji and I'm gonna go. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video. Thank you.